Hi everyone, it's Rax, and welcome to my fourth full class overview. We're getting through all the classes, and today we're going to talk about the class that I have in rank four, the Necromancer. Now, the Necromancer reminds me a lot of the Demon Hunter. They deal massive damage, but have very bad movement. Sounds kind of like the Demon Hunter, right? But the thing about the Necromancer is they are the ultimate pet class. If you like to use pets in the games that you play, the Necromancer is absolutely for you. And looking through the builds as we go through them, from the leveling guide to the solo guide, challenge rift, all the way to PvP, um, there are some different ways that you can actually play your Necromancer, which is something that some of the other classes cannot say. So like always, let's start with the overview to understand Necros, and then we'll jump into all the different build guides. So, uh, what are Necros good at? Well, they have some strong buffs. They give some really nice buffs, so uh, if you're bringing a Necro to groups, you're going to really enjoy having them. Uh, they have s such good minions. They have such good pets. So, if you like pets, got to play a Necro. They have the best ultimate in the game with Soul, Soul Fire, which we'll cover in a second. It's amazing. Um, Necros can be kind of hit or miss in PvP. If you can learn to use their abilities, like I believe they summon that really annoying wall or tower, uh, you can really, really disrupt teams, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. So it's not, it's not all that easy, and some of your summons die very easily in PvP, so it takes a little bit of practice. And they have super high damage. Their mobility sucks. Their only movement skill is Wraith Form, and it's really bad. So it might be a... It might get buffed one day. It can be Corpse Reliant. Of course, they're a Necromancer. Um, constant build swapping. You could view this as a negative, or you could view this as a positive. There's different ways to play your class. Again, other classes can't say that. Um, don't have a lot of range, and their class consumable is terrible. It's essentially nothing. So like we have done for the other classes, let's quickly go through their skills and see what are the good ones and what are the bad ones. And actually, almost all of them have a use. So, so Soul Fire, between the two primary attacks, has some splash damage, and it has the best ultimate. Enhance Soul Fire for 12 seconds, instead launching multiple Greater Bone Spirits that seek out and deal damage. Targets hit multiple times simultaneously take 75% cumulatively, cumulatively reduced damage. This ability is amazing. It's an amazing primary attack. It's an amazing ultimate. So this is part of the reason why Necros deal such insane damage. Um, Bone Spear also has some uses. Um, and it's a, actually a pretty common choice in PvP. So um, both of these are pretty decent. Bone Armor is an amazing buff that you will use. It's part of the great buffs that we talked about up above. Um, so a great buff to bring for solo or for group play. Um, Bone Spikes uh, is mostly for PvP, to crowd control people. Doesn't have much use in PvE. Bone Spirits, uh, I never saw anybody using this. Not a very good skill. Bone Wall, now this is where it comes in in PvP. Um, it summons this tower, which is so, which is so annoying to deal with. Um, where is it? Here it is. Bonewall instead summons a pillar of rotting corpses that knock targets into the air, damaging them and slowing all nearby enemies. If you can use this properly, you can piss off the other team. I mean, they're probably going to be on your, your porch with pitchforks. Uh, coming after you. So if you really like pissing people off, uh, learn to use this bone wall properly. Command Golem is just one of the amazing summons that necromancers have. Um, you will certainly use this. And uh, they have some nice mobility options, and they can tank for you. Command Skeletons, you raise a bunch of skeletons, and they passively raise up, and uh, they deal a lot of damage. They're amazing in PvE, uh, you can't really use them in PvP, though, because they die instantly. Uh, Corpse Explosion is very good in certain game modes, like Challenge Rifts, and we also recommend it while leveling up. You kill some things, alias some corpses, you detonate them. It's pretty good in certain situations. Corpse Lance is terrible. 
until Blizzard buffs it, forget it. Um, Dark Curse is extremely interesting. So there's a lot of things that it can do for you. Curse all enemies in the area, it deals damage to them. So you can just lay that down and start dealing damage. But there's this power guided by maggots. Dark Curse no longer decreases enemy vision, and instead it causes your minions to enter a frenzy. So they're going to deal way more damage because they're attack speed, and they're going to move faster. So you can use it to buff your summons. Uh, Grim Scythe is not great. You can use it for leveling up, especially to generate corpses for corpse explosion, and it doesn't have any legendary powers, so you won't be using this um, in the endgame. Skeletal Mage is amazing. You summon them, they're immobile, but they deal a ton of damage. Um, it's, it, they do pretty crazy damage. So again, another, another thing to add to your arsenal for the summons. You've got mages, you've got skeletons, and you've got the golems. And finally, their movement skill, Wraith Form. And this thing sucks. You get 50% increased movement speed, and you're invulnerable for two seconds. But if you attack while it's up, by the way, it's only up for two seconds, then it cancels it. Compared to the other movement skills in the game, except for a Demon Hunter, um, all the other ones are better. So Demon Hunters and Necros can't move for crap. So overall, looking through that list, the Necro has a lot more situational and useful skills than a lot of the other classes. The class consumable is worthless, summons a Soul Keeper to, re to recharge an empty Resurrection Stone. This is pretty much completely useless. So, need a new class consumable. Now, Necros use intelligence, so unlike the other classes, they have flipped intelligence and strength. Intelligence gives them damage, and strength gives them nothing. So intelligence is the best stat for damage. Vitality is very good for life. Um, fortitude gives you armor pen, which is critical hit damage. So, another super good one. In fact, some people may prioritize for fortitude over vitality like we did on the other classes. Willpower gives potency and resistance. Potency and resistance suck, so it's one of the worst stats, but it's still better than strength, which gives you, which gives you absolutely nothing except for the ORDR that the rest of them give you. So Int, Vite, and Fortitude are what you're looking for on your Necro. So this is kind of in an interesting situation for Necros on the Family Bonus and Reforge. Um, the Ravager bonus is not actually that good. You have a 2% chance when you kill an enemy to make it explode and it deals damage. That's okay, right? But the reason why the Ravager is a really good option is look at the attribute lists that come with it. Damage done by your summons increased 4%. Damage taken by your summons decreased by 4%. So Ravager Stone is what you're looking for just to buff your summons. And if not, then you can go for the Wildfire Stone. Again, it summon, has a chance to summon a Hydra. The Hydra is okay. But remember that it comes with very nice stats. Primary attack damage is good for Soul Fire, all skill damage, and critical hit chance. So it feels like we're looking for the family bonuses for all the wrong reasons. We're looking for like the stats rather than what they actually do. But that's the way that it goes sometimes. Normal Gems, it's the same as the other classes. Tourmaline is better than Ruby. And red is better than blue is better than yellow. Tourmaline is damage, so it's the best. It's better than life. Um, Sapphire gets armor pen, which is critical hit damage, which is better than armor surviving. And the yellow ones both suck. Just use the higher ones that you have. Same as the other classes, we're going to go over the starter legendary gems because the best in slot legendary gems are very hard to acquire. And they're all the same for all the classes. Everyone wants a blood-soaked jade and a seeping bile and a howler's call. So let's talk, let's talk about the ones that are actually accessible to you in the beginning. Everlasting Torment is a must-have for all classes. It inflicts agony. There's a bunch of numbers there. And it increases your attack speed. It does a lot of damage. Believe me. Everlasting Torment is really good. Fervent Fang is amazing because it increases the damage that you deal to the same target. So after you hit them 10 times, you're doing 7.5% extra damage to the same target. Makes you very good at killing elites and bosses, and Necros are probably the second best class at doing that. Um, so Fervent Fang gives them even more power. Berserker's Eye, you deal more damage, but you take more damage. This is a trade we will gladly make. 
Karazhan's invigoration, like the Demon Hunter, the Necros love their primary attack. So, the legendary gem that buffs the speed of the primary attack and the damage works well for them, whereas it sucks for other classes. I think the Necros are one of the only classes that would seriously consider taking Zod Stone. It increases the duration of the ultimate and the damage of the ultimate. But the Soulfire ultimate is so good that it actually makes Zod Stone worth it. And finally, Chain Death increases the damage done by your attacks per your target hit up to 4.5%. Do a lot of splash damage, so it makes sense for the Necro. The Awakened stuff is very, very endgame. For the Paragon points, same as all the classes, we have this beautiful slider here. Here, I'll let you go through it on your own. Um, but when you go through this, know that we took the path which, which essentially gives you the most damage, right? All the way up to Paragon 199, which is going to take you like months to hit. So this will set you up for a very long time. One thing to keep in mind is the circle, the circle nodes are passive. You always get them. And the square nodes are active. And the active nodes will only work if you have the tree enabled. You can only have one enabled. So notice how we have this check mark here. Check mark here. We have enabled the Vanquisher tree. Make sure that you do that when you're playing. So that is the overview for Necromancers. And with that information, we're going to be able to jump into all the guides very quickly. So when you're leveling up, what does that look like? You're going to start off with Command Skeletons, Grim Scythe, and Soul Fire, right? So Soul Fire is godly, and so is Command Skeletons. Grim Scythe isn't great, but we're going to get Corpse Explosion very quickly after. So we can use Grim Scythe to make some corpses, and then we blow it up with Corpse Explosion. That works beautifully. At level 8, you will get Bone Spikes. Bone Spikes are really only used in PvP. So we're going to try to get rid of this as quickly as possible. Level 15, you'll get Wraith Form. You can use it for a while. You can check out the movement speed uh, and figure out how underwhelming it is until Blizzard buffs it. Then you'll get Skeletal Mage. You should probably replace Wraith Form at that time. If you really want to keep Wraith Form, that's fine. But now you'll have Skeletal Mage and your Command Skeletons, and your Soul Fire. You can chop stuff down with Grim Scythe and detonate it with Corpse Explosion. That should take you all the way to max level quite comfortably. So we hit max. Now we need a solo build, right? What if we're going to walk around playing solo? Well, it's time to bust out the summons. We've got Soul Fire, we've got our Skeletal Mages, and we've got Command Skeletons, just like before. Now we'll add Command Golem. So now we just one more summon. And then we've got the Dark Curse. And remember, the Guided by Maggot's Legendary Power is going to give you the frenzy to all of your summons. Summon everybody up, give them a curse, run. You're going to be able to dominate everything as solo. A little bit slow, you got to just walk around because Wraith Form sucks. But you've got your army to do all your bidding and just watch everything die around you. So now we go to Challenge Rifts. And there's two different builds if you're playing solo or if you're playing in groups. If you're playing in solo, we always go with Soul Fire, like always. Bone Wall you can use to with this ever grasping vestments. And this gives you a line of skeletal soldiers. It's gonna put a little formation in front of you. It's gonna knock them back. It's gonna give you an opportunity to actually deal your damage. Because remember, in challenge rifts, they're extremely dangerous. Of course, we have our golem to tank for us and be a godly summon. We will detonate stuff with Corpse Explosion. Uh, it's very, very valuable in Challenge Rifts, one of the only game modes for, where we will continue to use it. And of course, the Dark Curse. And this time, we're going to take Mournful Destroyer. It's going to curse the ground and consistently deal damage. As we group up our huge clump of enemies, we're going to lay this down and essentially just burn them alive and then Corpse Explode once we get the, uh, once we get the corpses on the ground. Real quick, I should point out that on these summoner builds, you want to use Shepherd's Call to Wolves. Your summons deal 15% more damage, your critical hit chance is increased for all of your summons, and your summons entered a frenzy state. Of course, this is the summoner set. We will use this whenever we're playing the summoner stuff with the Necromancer. Now, in group challenge rifts, remember, we can take certain things that are going to help our friends, like Bone Armor, for example. 
Protect yourself and your allies with a shield of bones. It absorbs damage for 12 seconds. There are some nice legendaries you can take. It now grants all, all of you and your party members charges of damage immunity, which is amazing. There's another one which increases the duration. Okay, so you're helping everybody out. And the rest of it is the same. The Dark Curse, the Skellies, the Golem, and the Soul Fire. So, what are we going to do in dungeons? In dungeons, there's usually not that much danger, so we don't really need the bone armor anymore. We're just going to make our summons, our skellies, our golem, and our mages. We're going to use soul fire, and we're going to go with the dark curse, pretty much just going with our full damage output because we're so good at killing bosses. That's the role that we fill for the group. The rest of them can buff us. Now, what if we go to the big raids? We go to the big raids, there's a little bit more danger, right? We've got our skellies and we've got our command golem, but now we can bring back bone armor for the survivability. If it's a big scary boss, we can help people stay alive and the wraith form to move out of something or just for the invulnerability to survive some mass massive attack is going to save our life. Okay, so now we go to the PVP guide, the bone wall PVP guide. And now here's where it's going to get a little bit different. Here is where we will take Bone Spear. Shoot a piercing Bone Spear forward and pierce up to two additional enemies. This is going to give us a little bit more value than the uh, Soul Fire was and all the PvE content. Of course, we will take Bone Armor to stay alive. And here we go, ready for the, uh, ready for the Bone Wall nonsense where we turn it into a giant pillar. If you get good at using this, the other team is going to hate you. And that, unfortunately, is such a great feeling. And Bone Spikes is a great way to stun your enemies. And then with no mouth face, they no longer charges up and instead immediately summons three forward moving spikes that knock enemies away. You're knocking them around with more than one ability. Uh, not going to lie, Necros can really piss you off. And then, of course, Wraith form to move around and dodge certain attacks. Uh, it's not the best, but we've got to take it in PvP. And finally, one other PvP build. I think the only difference here is they switch around some of the legendary powers here. And um, when you're PvPing, you can consider some different uh, sets. So Feasting Baron's Pack increases the duration of the abilities by, that cause loss of control by 30%. Okay, Again, just trying to piss them off even more. Increases damage done from all sources to enemies suffering under your loss of control effects. It's pretty much all just about crowd controlling the rest of the team. Unleash a Nova Vice each time you defeat an enemy afflicted by your loss of control effects, dealing more damage. So this PvP build is obviously labeled in control just to control the enemy team and make them hate you. And this one, I think, is a little bit more focused on damage because we are going to take the War Rags of Shal Boss, which is the primary focused set, which makes it deal more damage by giving it uh, more attack speed. So get more damage, get more attack speed, and then they have a chance to further increase our attack speed the more that we use it. So you're just throwing bone spears, throwing bone spears, throwing bone spears, and waiting for your opportunities to just ruin the other team. So yeah, the necromancers, as they said way back here in the overview, you're kind of uh, swapping your build all the time. You're going to have to try a lot of the abilities and see which ones work for you. You're going to have to learn how to use the bone tower in PvP to really make people mad going to have to try a full summoner build, a half summoner build with some buffs, maybe a corpse explosion build for challenge rifts, constantly trying new flavors. Um, so if that sounds good to you, then the Necro is the right class. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. I hope this prepares you to command the undead in Immortal. And next up, we'll do Monk and Wizard to wrap up all of the complete class guides. Thank you.